Saint Benedict wrote a rule of life for men and women to follow who chose to enter into monastic life. This one line, this is, excuse me, this is one line from his famous rule. The first step in humility is unhesitating obedience, which comes naturally to those who cherish Christ above all things. Unhesitating obedience. That's not something that comes naturally to Americans. <laughs> uh, to be fair, though, I don't think it comes naturally to anyone in the Western world. But what does unhesitating obedience look like? It looks like Jesus. Recall in your mind's eye the Garden of Gethsemane on that Holy Thursday night. Did Jesus want to continue the plot set up by Judas, he says very clearly, Father, let this cup pass from me. Jesus, in his human nature, does not want to die, but he acquiesces with unhesitating obedience, especially when he says, Father, let not my will, but your will be done. Now, the cynic will read hesitation in that quote, but Jesus is just asking a simple question. And once he receives the Father's answer, he does what the Father wills. He accepts the cross. All of Jesus' life shows us what humility looks like. The very fact that God leaves the glory of heaven and comes down to earth taking on human flesh, walking our walk, talking our talk, dying our death, is humility par excellence. Now, could God have stayed in heaven, snapped his almighty fingers, and saved us from our sins? Again, the cynic would think so. But God couldn't do that. Because as nice as that is, humbly leaving heaven and becoming who he desires to reconcile with himself is the greater act of love. God is love. He must always do what love demands. And Jesus sat with sinners and became friends with them. Jesus touched lepers without fear. Jesus forgave the worst of sinners who sought his mercy. This is humility. And Jesus took his first step in humility by being unhesitatingly obedient to his Father in heaven. Now, obviously, the saints also practice unhesitating obedience as well. And now we kind of get into that nitty-gritty of who we are called to be obedient to. This can be tricky, and it requires daily prayer to assist us in our discernment. So let's look at the life of St. Therese of Lisieux as an example, and she's beautifully present now in our church by our elevator entrance here, uh, courtesy of IHM. So St. Therese, from a very young age, had a deep and intimate prayer life with the Blessed Trinity. She felt God calling her to join the Carmelites, from a young age. She knew she was called to be obedient to God and to be obedient to the church. She wanted to enter the convent as soon as possible. She wrote to Mother Superior at age 12 or 13, requesting that she be admitted into the convent. And Mother Superior, practicing good prudence, said, no, not yet. And St. Therese was not satisfied with that answer. So while on pilgrimage with her father uh, in Rome when she was 15, as soon as she saw an opportunity, she ran to the feet of Pope Leo XIII and asked him if she could enter the Carmelites at her young age. The Holy Father, also prudently, told her to be patient and trust in the will of God. 
She found it hard to be obedient to Mother Superior, to the Holy Father, and even her own dad, St. Louis, who told her as well to wait until she was 18. St. Therese wanted to be obedient to God, who was definitely calling her to be a Carmelite, but she did find it difficult to be obedient in the same way the fourth commandment calls us to be obedient to those in authority over us. So Saint did, Saint, so, so did St. Therese act in accord with God's will? Did she sin? This is where daily prayer comes in handy when practicing good discernment. Now, St. Therese was a young girl who acted as any other teenagers would when they didn't get their way. Did she sin by not obeying and trying to go over her father said to Mother Superior and over Mother Superior said to the Holy Father? Probably, but all the saints are sinners, right? St. Therese was obviously praying daily. She had her discernment skills down enough to know God was desiring her to be a Carmelite, but her skills needed a little maturing. Again, she was a teenager, God understood. But the question for us is, how do we practice that good discernment so that we can be unhesitatingly obedient and work and walk with the Lord humbly? Well, allow me to bring up another saint, St. Ignatius of Loyola. He gives us a great outline for discernment in his examine prayer. Here are the five steps to his examine. Gratitude, come Holy Spirit, review failures, seek forgiveness, look ahead. The examine should be prayed every day, and it can take as little as five minutes or as long as you need it to. So allow me to briefly touch on each step of this beautiful prayer. The first step is gratitude. So in the past, 24 hours since you last prayed, what are you grateful for? What gifts have you received? And are we humble enough to see God as the author and giver of each of those gifts? Come Holy Spirit, the second step, to call down the Holy Spirit through those three words, come Holy Spirit, and ask the Spirit to fill your heart with his peace and love, as you continue through this prayer. And don't forget to thank the Spirit again for those gifts that you received. The third step, to review failures. Where did you fall short in the greatest commandment in these last 24 hours? Where did you fail to love God above all things and your neighbor as yourself? Where did we fail to be Jesus in that day? Fourth step, to seek forgiveness. Humbly go to God the Father with a contrite heart and pray for the Father's forgiveness for those failures. And then also to keep a mental note of sins that we need to bring for complete healing in the sacrament of reconciliation. The fifth and final step, to look ahead. With the Blessed Trinity, what is coming up in the next 24 hours? Where will I need the Lord to assist me? Where will I need an extra bit of God's grace? Is there a difficult conversation I need to have? Is there a project that needs to be finished? Where can I use the Lord's help? And how is God calling me to reveal his love in these next 24 hours? Believe me, if you practice the examined prayer, you will see a change in your life. And you can find these steps online simply by searching Ignatius Examine Prayer. They probably name the steps a little differently, but it's all the same idea. This daily prayer will help you see how God is acting in your life, what the will of God the Father is for your life, and it will move your heart to a place of humility that comes out of unhesitating obedience. God will ask you to jump. You will automatically ask how high. God will reveal your cross to you, and you will automatically pick it up, knowing and trusting 
He is carrying it with you. And he's even taking on most of the weight.